In our last video, we learned that we can get out of measures from relatively simple functions rho. So we know that out of measures exist. And in this video, we're finally going to learn how we can get from out of measures measures. And for this, we will study the famous Cratheodoris theorem. Before talking about the theorem, let's define a very important concept. So let's say that we have an outer measure mu star. We will say that given a set A, subset of our space X, the set A is mu star measurable if the outer measure of a set E is equal to the outer measure of E intersection A plus the outer measure of E intersection A complement. And this has to hold for all subset E of X. These things are all well defined because remember that outer measures were functions that took elements in parts of X and for each of those elements gave them numbers between 0 and infinity. So as the outer measure is defined over all subsets of x, mu star of e, mu star of e intersection a, and the intersection a complement are all well defined. But what is this formula actually telling us? Well, let's make a drawing. We have here the set X, it's our whole space, and let's take this red set here to be A. So this formula has to hold for all subsets of X. In particular, let's suppose for a minute that this subset here is E. So the outer measure of E will be measuring all the green square. And what it's telling us is that you can write that measure in two parts. First, as the measure of this area, that is A intersection E, so it would be in this first part, plus the measure of this other area here, which is E intersection A complement, because the complement of A is all this space that's not inside the red circle, so this blue section is E intersection A complement, and that would be this measure. So this definition is very intuitive. And now something important to notice is, whenever a set satisfies this, the set that's measurable is A, it's not E. So A is mu star measurable if this condition is satisfied for all E subsets of X. And another important thing to notice is we have an equality here. And whenever you have an equality, it means that you have to prove the smaller than or equal to and greater than or equal to. Because if these two things satisfy, then you have an equality. But in this case, one of those inequalities is trivial, because mu star of E is always smaller than or equal to mu star of E intersection A plus mu star of E intersection A complement. So this one is trivial. And I'm not going to prove it in this video, so try as an exercise to prove why is this inequality trivial. And for this, try to remember the definition of mu star. Because remember, mu star is an outer measure. So there are a few properties that we know from the definition that mu star has to satisfy. So use the definition of mu star to prove 
this inequality. And so, if this inequality is trivial, given a set A, in order to prove this for all E subset of X, we should prove D greater than or equal. So, in general, we will say that A subset of X is mu star measurable if mu star of E is greater than or equal to the other two terms. Because if this one is valid, as this other inequality is always valid, that would immediately imply this first one. So whenever you have to prove that a set A is mu star measurable, all you have to prove is this one with a greater than or equal to over there. And now the motivation behind defining mu star measurability has to do with the fact that whenever we have a set that's well behaved, this equation, the one with the equality, this equation is telling us that the outer measure of the set A is equal to the inner measure. I mentioned the inner measure in a previous video, just very quickly, as an analogous to outer measure, but instead of measuring sets with bigger sets, we measure them with smaller ones. So the definitions are analogous, and this equality is telling us that the outer measure and the inner measure are equal. So that's why it's important for a set, for a subset A, to be mu star measurable. It's telling us this set is well behaved. Okay, so now that we have the concept of measurable, let's have a look at Cara Theodori's theorem. This is Cara Theodori's theorem. It's the theorem we have been waiting for since we started seeing problems with the definition of a measure. Let's have a look at it. We have an outer measure mu star on a set X, and we take the collection of all mu measurable sets. So we take the collection of all the sets that satisfy this equality over here. So what the theorem is telling us is that collection of sets, of new measurable sets, is a sigma algebra. And this is amazing, because if we go back to the first videos, we can see how complicated sigma algebras were. We were asking for a set so many properties. Well, it turns out that whenever you have an outer measure, the mu star measurable sets form a sigma algebra. And that's just amazing. But the theorem even goes further and tells us now if you take your measure mu star and restrict it to this sigma algebra m, you get a complete measure. So the restriction of mu star to m, we will denote it as mu star along bar m. And this, all it does is it's exactly as mu. So Instead of going from parts of x, it will now have its domain in the sigma algebra m, and it will give us a number from 0 to infinity. And the way it works is the exact same way. So it takes an element a, and it returns mu star of a. So it's the same outer measure we had, but we're not going to look at it over parts of x because that set is way too big. We are only going to focus on the mu star measurable sets, which form a sigma algebra. But what this is telling us is, well, this restriction is a measure, and call it mu. So it's amazing, because measures were very complicated, sigma algebra was very complicated, and we found an easy way to create our outer measures. And now we found another easy way to create measures from outer measures. 